Welcome back everyone. In the last video I showed you three different projects that I'm going to be working on this winter and today I am doing none of them. Some of it I'm waiting on parts, others I'm waiting for the machine shop to do its thing. So things have got a little boring right now. But a little boredom can be good. It can energize you, kind of make you want to try something new. Creativity, that's what I'm going to spend this, uh, this free time on today. I bought a pint of this really interesting base color, and I think this is a good time to make my Harley look a little less sad and tired. Fortunately, this bike only has a tiny little peanut tank and rear fender, so one pint of color is going to be plenty to get this thing painted. I'm also going to paint the taillight body because back in 1965, it would have been body colored. So my basic plan of attack is body filler and primer first to provide a smooth surface for the later layers of paint to come. Like so many things in life, this is one of those situations where getting it perfect right from the get-go is going to pay great dividends later on. Some of those low spots might not be visible now, but they sure will be when you put the gloss coat on. To get it where it needs to be, you might even have to do a couple rounds of primer. It's boring, but wait a minute, what were you doing? All right, we are ready to lay down some base color. Man, I have been dying to use this color on something for a while now. It is an OEM Volkswagen hue called Fresco Green Metallic, typically seen on Volkswagen Passats from the early 2000s. I had a buddy whose dad had one of those back in the day. It just kind of stuck with me. It actually looks a little darker in the can than it will in real life. This is a water-based paint, so it's gonna lighten up as it dries. This color was wasted on station wagons. So the base coat's down, but we're not finished yet. I'm gonna do a second color. But before I do that, I'm going to lay down some clear coat. It's just kind of to protect the first color from having any adverse reactions with the second, especially this being a water-based paint. Now, this next part is the fun bit, or at least the creative one. I'm gonna lay out the masking tape for the second color. On the right side, I'm going to paint it kind of similar to the original OEM 1965 paint scheme, and that includes the Harley-Davidson logo of the era. Couple stripes and I'm pretty much in business. On the other side and on the top, I'm gonna to get a little creative. I'm gonna do some flames. Because, I don't know, it's a 1965 Sportster. If there's any bike that's gonna get flames, it's gonna be that one. For the flames, I'm gonna use some really thin line tape. That way I can get the nice curve without wrinkling the edges of the tape. I meant to time-lapse this whole thing so you could see the process, but halfway through, some buddies came over and we had a couple beers on Saturday night while I finished this thing up. That's a good solution for boredom, right? Anyway, here it is. Throw a little bit of tape on the areas that need to stay green and you're pretty much good to go. It's black, of course it's black. In fact, I'm still recording this and I'm pretty sure the thumbnail is gonna be me spraying some black paint. But I did do something a little different. And this is not what it looks like, I promise. It's pearlescent powder. Uh, in this case, minty green. Normally you would put the pearl in the clear coat, but I only want the pearlescent effect uh, in the black areas. So I'm just putting it in the base color. Uh, that's the beauty of you know working on your own stuff. You can kind of experiment a bit.
Okay, with the black paint done, it's time to pull that tape off and we'll move on to the water slide decal. Yeah, just like on a model airplane or something. This part is actually surprisingly easy. You just have to put the water slide decal in this bowl of dog slobber for like 30 seconds and then carefully, gently slide the piece off the paper onto the tank. You're gonna have a while before this thing is like permanently set in place, so take your time, just try not to rip the thing. Finally, a couple layers of clear coat to really seal it all in there. The green, the black, the logo. It gets laid on thick so that you can wet sand and really remove those ridges between paint layers, make it nice and smooth. Or it will once it's wet sanded and then polished back up. But for now, we're done. You guys wanna see it on the bike? Now I'm just gonna let the paint harden up over the winter. That's why I haven't put the fender on yet. But don't worry, that one looks good too. So, word of advice, paint jobs might not be the best cure for boredom. There's a lot of tediousness involved if you couldn't tell. It also takes a really long time, but man, I think the results are worth it. And uh, it, you know, it satisfied that kind of creative itch. It's not a perfect paint job. There's still some dust to be buffed out, but overall, I'm happy with it. I might try and get some silver pinstripes on that thing, but I'll have to think about it. Now, what to do next?